Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bar Titsu Lab, and in this particular video, we're going to go through some back to basics pugilistic combinations. It's very, very important to be able to throw your punches in combination, even if you're practicing a boxing for self defense art like Bar Titsu. Often, the first strike you put on an opponent might not be enough to put him out of the fight. Very often, in fact, unless you've got very good artifice and very good surprise. Knocking out an opponent with just one blow is often a very difficult thing to accomplish. So therefore, we need to be able to hit cumulatively. Each strike we should treat as a finishing strike if we can, but be prepared for and able to be able to deliver cumulative combined strikes. So you've got that concussive, repeated concussive effect on the head and on the body. Now, I'm very, very big on target focused training, which means that whilst we think initially in terms of head and body, then we start to break that down, you know, not into stupid little pressure points, but are we aiming trachea? Are we aiming for the point of the jaw? Are we aiming for the temple? Are we aiming behind the ear? So think about these common sense areas of vulnerability and hit them and hit them multiple times until they break and you can escape. And the point of our pugilistic combinations is not to win points or to win rounds, it's to win time and space so you can make an exit. And when that involves knocking someone down or knocking someone out or putting someone out of action entirely, depending on the situation, knowing where to hit and how often to hit is very, very important. So as I mentioned, hitting more than once is often key to your success, whether you hit multiple times before you enter a grapple, whether you don't wish to engage in a grapple and you want to hit enough times percussively that that is dissuaded, there are many reasons why we want to cumulatively strike. So again, I'm just gonna take you through some of the basic combinations. If you've seen other videos, you'll see me break down some of these punches in a lot more detail. So we're just gonna go through nice, short, sharp, simple combinations for you. Okay, so the first one, we'll start very, very classic. We're gonna start with the lead off, which is the left hand lead off with the drop step and the extension and we're going to finish that with a rear hand now sometimes i will use the word across but if we're speaking strictly across is something which goes around another striking limb so it goes over the top in a bridging style motion it bridges over the top of someone else's punch so you've got essentially a lead off your left hand and your rear straight but again nowadays it's just semantics and we use the word cross but it's just something to bear in mind. So nice and simple, we assume our pugilistic stance. If we're right-handed, typically our left leg will be forward, pointed at the opponent. Our left arm will be pointed at the opponent, the fist going up towards their facial region, the right hand barring the mark. So covering your liver, covering your solar plexus, keeping the elbows in nice and tight, and your hands should be in some degree of mill. Now, obviously there are different pugilistic stances, some higher, some lower, some mixed. So again, there are lots and lots of sources for you to play with. I'm just gonna assume a default natural mid-range one for now. So, first combination, nice and simple. What we call the, the one-two nowadays, but we're gonna put a bit more strategic thinking into it. It's a very easy to just go, ah, oh, the one-two, we do that all the time, let's move on to another exciting one. But there is a real good reason why the one-two is the go-to combination shot in boxing. And as I mentioned, we are target-focused training. So in our pugilistic stance, in this instance, we're going to be thinking throat. So we're going to do our lead off to the throat. And we're going to bend our lead knee and we're going to drop our weight into that shot into the throat. So I'm here. And then we're going to follow up with our rear handed shot. And in this instance, what we're going to do once we've got the throat is we're going to go to the chin, to the jaw. Okay, so we're going lead off to the throat, and then we're going to follow that through, turning our body with a right handed shot with a vertical fist into the tip of the chin. Throat, chin, throat, chin. So when done, we've got the long extension of the lead off because we're entering the foray here with that lunging step, and then as my feet come behind me, and then going to follow that in with a shot to the jaw, like so. You'll notice that the range compresses. The range compresses because I am compressing it. If I wanted to stay out, I wanted to box academically, yes, I can fire off 
16 inch guns at long range. And you can trade this kind of stuff all day. But in Bartitsu, we're looking at self-defense boxing and therefore often we're either looking to strike and escape or strike and keep compressing and keep attacking and keep smothering until the danger is gone. So nice and simple, lead off to the throat. We keep shuffling forward, rear hand to the chin. So done the speed. Straight in. Straight in. Straight in. There's more hip torque, there's more shoulder, there's more turn on the rear hand. And because we're altering it, because we're compressing the range, which isn't very common for the traditional academic boxing of the period, we're compressing the range in this instance. So we're smashing in here, we're following through, and we're driving that shot straight into the tip of the chin. Okay, second of these, nice and simple. We're going to do an exploratory lead off, a dedicated lead off from the exact same shot. Okay, so from here, exploratory lead off. So we just incline our body a little bit forward. Yeah. Hum. Hum. We incline our body forward, we return, we then do a much more extended lead off, and then we follow through with the rear handed strike to the tip of the chin. So, one, two, three. One, two, much more penetration on the second, three. And you know, it's the body turns from being relatively angular and we turn, we're straight on. So from here, a short, sharp probing shot to the chin. A long lead off to the throat and then follow with a final shot to the chin. And I'm intentionally crossing range here. I'm not staying out here. I'm intentionally crossing range because I want to get into maybe some Atemiwaza, some Nagiwaza, some throws, some blocks, some other things from the Bartitsu Cannon. So from here, a short, sharp lead hand, a more extended lead off, followed by a right straight. Nice and simple. Short, sharp, long, follow up, and one, one, two. Secondly, oh, sorry, thirdly, we're gonna go up high to the head, and we're gonna go down low to the body. But you're just gonna remember that the human is a 360 degree 3D object. So get out of the habit of just doing everything in the kill box, in between each other's shoulders. That's not a desirable place to be because you can both be firing nasty shots at each other. So in this instance, we're gonna be slightly angled off as if we were having some verbal discussion and I've moved myself quite wisely away. So I've moved myself to the left or to the right. I'm gonna move myself to the left just because it's easier for you to see. So in this version, I'm gonna fire my lead off, but now it's gonna go behind his ear in that little dent we have here. Okay, so the lead off, is going to go behind his ear and the right hand now is going to fire straight into his liver so we're going to fire that on his right hand side we're going to fire that body right-handed shot into the liver so we've maneuvered and manipulated ourselves and bear in mind that talking hands or the use of the fence actually mimics rather well the old bare knuckle boxing stances so you see talking hands Bare knuckle boxing, talking hands, bare knuckle boxing, talking hands, bare knuckle boxing. So again, it's a relatively simple flow between those two elements. So as we're moving here, we're gonna do our lead off behind the ear. We're gonna step in and we're gonna fire that shot into the liver. So we're gonna do a long lunging lead off. So we've talked our way here. We're gonna drop our body weight in and we're gonna finish with a shot into that liver. So nice and simple. So one to the head, one to the body in its basic form, but in reality, one behind the ear, one into the liver. Okay. 
and then we've got another one so we're gonna in this instance we're gonna remain front on and we're gonna be at close range and we're gonna step off and be at long range so we're gonna be closer than we like in this particular combination and we're gonna throw a right solidly to the center of the mass into the solar plexus so we're gonna end up closer than we'd like we're gonna whip our body and we're gonna fire with a vertical fist into the solar plexus we're going to take a short shuffle back and we're going to fire that same shot but now at the head so body head body head so this is an example as i mentioned earlier sometimes we want to advance and close that distance sometimes we don't like that distance and we want to move away in this instance i've got closer than i'd like we fire this shot into the solar plexus turning our hip turning our shoulder turning our foot we take a step back, we keep him indexed with this hand, and we fire one off to the tip of the jaw or along the side of the jaw. From here. Nice and simple. Solar plexus, chin. Okay. Next one of these, and I'm moving through because there's so many combinations for you to play with. These are just some of the basic ones to get used to. But as I mentioned, target focused training. Don't just think body head, move yourself now into thinking trachea, arteries, chin, jawline, behind the ear, temple, collarbone, clavicle. These are the things, that's the level of detail you should be thinking of as you advance your way through and as you fire your combinations because you are boxing for self-defense. Now, this one, we're gonna fake what is known as a snapback blow. So we're gonna turn our hand thumb down and we're gonna try and rake him with these two big knuckles. Wham! Like so, so it comes across and clips the chin. Wham! And you turn your body as if it were a hook. Wham! 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 So you get that motion, that's a snapback. But in essence, we're faking this. We want him to move back and move forward. So we're gonna fake the snap back and then we're gonna turn it into a pivot blow. So sideways hammer fist. Some people turn with them, so like a spinning hammer fist. Other people just cock it and fire it, cock it and fire it. So this initial fake movement, the snap back, makes the opponent slip. And often once they slip, many people end up a little bit off balance and they reset. So we're gonna play into that. We're gonna lean a bit forward and do the snap back. He's gonna lean back. As he leans back into that original position, we're gonna smash him with the pivot blow. So from here, we fake the snap back, and smash in the pivot blow. The pivot blow, imagine like a really strong backhand or a chop, you're whipping it out with all of the torque and power that your body can muster. Once you've got that, then we're gonna try a traditional bare knuckle uppercut. So we're gonna do a long range, fully supinated extended punch. So this is, before uppercuts came smaller and tighter and the more American style boxing came in, uppercuts traditionally were launched almost like an upside down jab. So you're firing the knuckles and you can get them into the throat, into the jawline, they're a nice little nasty shot. So long and extended like so. So we're gonna work a long range uppercut and we're gonna do that into the throat and then we're going to do a cross into the solar plexus. Nice and simple. One. And we step in, so, like so, long range uppercut, boom, into the throat, or into the body. You'll notice that the trajectory is a little different. It might look on the surface similar to a lead off and then body shot, but notice that I'm driving up as opposed to in. So there's a difference in trajectory, I'm going up, as opposed to penetrating, I'm smashing upwards, albeit the arm is running relatively similar in its final resting position. From here. Nice, nice and simple. Next one, we're gonna go a bit jazzy. So we're going to do a lead off to the chin. We're then gonna roll at the elbow to do a matto to the nose and then finally we're going to do a cross uh, sorry a right hand 
and we're going to do that to the spleen, so on the opposite side, the left hand side. So we're going jaw, nose, spleen, boom, we bring it back just a little, two, three. So the matto, the hammer fist, a nice little punch taken from French boxing. Very, very simple usage here. You can get really good power, you can get great kidney hammers, great hammers to the jaw. But in reality, for the, for the purposes of this, all I'm after is a short turn at the elbow to do a kind of ricochet style shot. One, two, and then drive this into the spleen. Very, very simple. And the last one, just to make it very simple for you, we're going to do an elbow defense. So we're going to take a shot on the elbow. We're going to repost with a chopper. So a downwards style blow using these two knuckles coming down the nose or the jaw. So take a shot, repost, one, two, and then we're going to do a snap back punch. So you saw earlier the punch that flicks across like this. We're going to step and we're going to drive that behind the ear. Okay, so again, nice and nice and simple. Defend with the elbow, deliver the chopper, step and do the snap back. And again, you can do this behind the ear, into the throat, into the eye, depending on where you step. And bear in mind that humans are 3D, they are in a space. So some shots work better slightly to the right, slightly to the left, slightly below, slightly above, from behind. There are different places the fist and the knuckles can get in, such as behind the ear, which is more conducive from the side. But in that one, we take the shot on the elbow, we return the chopper, and then finally, we bring in that snap back using these two knuckles. We roll, twist our hips, twist our shoulders, and smash that behind the ear or into the throat. So there's just some combinations. If you imagine in normal Western boxing, there are thousands of different variants and combinations you can do with the smaller range of punches. In pugilism, you've got a lot more tools in the bag. So get used to firing compound shots that mix up normal boxing, pugilism, different heights, different directions, different angles of attack, doing things from conversation through to being on guard, through to being upside. There are so many ways you can play with compound hitting with pugilism, but hopefully that's given you a bit of inspiration to start mixing up your normal one twos with your hammer blows, with your snapbacks, with your choppers, and also target orientated thinking, thinking beyond body and head now to think throat, behind the ear, in the temple, liver, spleen, bladder, groin, femoral artery, Wherever you're punching, wherever you're hitting, standing, sitting on top of a person, start to think about precisely where you're hitting and make sure you're using the best tool for that particular target.